Hi there, I'm Brian Keller, Technical Evangelist for Microsoft. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how Microsoft Test Manager 2013, which is a member of the Visual Studio 2013 family, can be used to conduct test case management. What this means is that you can store your test plans, you can create your test cases, and you can run these test cases on a regular basis to make sure that you're reporting on the software quality of your application and filing bugs as appropriate for your development team. This is Microsoft Test Manager 2013, and this is a tool that is primarily going to be used by your manual testers to store and track their test cases and to uh, run those test cases on a regular basis so that they can file bugs if they encounter any within your software. What you're looking at on this screen is an approach that's usually referred to as formal test case management. With formal test case management, you create test suites, which are mapped back to individual requirements that your, your development team might be working on. So here, you can see that I have a requirement work item. Work item number seven uh, has something to do with customers being able to remove items from their shopping cart. And then over on the right-hand side, I have a list of test cases that I've created, which actually validate the expected behavior. If I open up one of those test cases, you can see that it really consists of a set of test steps, and each one of those test steps corresponds to something that the manual tester is expected to do. If I move over to the test tab, I can take one of these test cases and I can run this test case. So uh, let's see, we can run this guy, and it will launch what's called Microsoft Test Runner. And Test Runner is responsible for doing several things. One of the things it's responsible for is actually presenting the tester with a list of all the test steps that they need to perform. Uh, but it also can capture rich data in the background. So as I'm conducting this particular test, if I encounter a bug, one thing I might want to do is capture a screenshot and include that when I file a bug back to the development team. And I can just move through each step as pass or fail. I can navigate to the next section of the website and keep moving until I find a bug that I might want to report. And so that's quite easy to, to, uh, to accomplish. And in the background, like I said, Microsoft Test Manager uh, can capture lots of rich information for me, including the screenshots and the video recordings that might be helpful if a tester does find a bug. Now there's another type of testing which is increasingly popular and that's called exploratory testing or sometimes referred to as agile testing. With exploratory testing, you actually don't start from a test case. With exploratory testing, you actually just start exploring an application and uh, trying to do what you as a tester know how to do, which is to try to find bugs which might um, be interesting for the development team to be aware of. And so when I start testing using this website, Notice that I don't have any test steps along the left-hand side. So as I start to explore this website, um, it's actually capturing all the information about what I'm doing in the background for me, but it's not guiding me along the way. And this is really something that, that a lot of experienced testers enjoy doing because it allows them to try a lot of different paths of the application uh, based on their experience as a tester and try to find areas that might break. And so here, if I actually drill into the delete area, you'll notice here that I'm actually missing some of my information. So customer, created by, and so on, uh, is all set to none. And I think that's a bug. So I'm go going to actually capture a screenshot here and we'll create a bug based on that. Now, I did a lot of steps as part of that particular test execution. You saw me clicking back and forth a few times on the various links. And so, if I was to hand all of this information to the developer, they might be a little bit overwhelmed. But what I'm going to do is actually scope this down a little bit. So I can say um, clicking on delete has some missing information. And when I do that, I can say that I want to change the steps and I'll actually just select the steps that are most relevant to that particular test execution. We'll select that, and now what that's done is actually scope it down to what's relevant and necessary for that particular bug uh, to be meaningful to the developer. The other thing that I can do is use those steps to actually create a new test case, which we can test on an ongoing basis. Because I just happened to uncover this bug, but it seems like it's a pretty important test case to add to a part of our regular testing plan. And so when I save this bug, I can create a test case. Now I'm given the ability to create a new test case. So I can say, make sure the 
delete page contains correct values. And then down below, I can edit these test steps. Maybe I want to insert a new step to say, um, go to the internet dashboard. And I can even do things like you know, highlight using rich text certain fields that might be helpful for the tester as they're reading this test case. So I could say, do not click confirm, for example. And we can make that red. And now that's a test case which is going to be stored alongside the rest of the test cases in my plan. Now I can continue testing and continue finding bugs using an exploratory testing session. Or if I go back to my plan, you'll see that that new bug that I just created has been added, or that new test case has been added. And I, I can link that back to a requirement um, if, it's, uh, if, it's, if it's applicable to be linked to a requirement. The last thing that I'm going to show you is a new capability that we added called web-based test case management. And with web-based test case management, I can still access my test plan. So here you can see the test plan that I was just looking at. But I can do so via a web browser. And this is really nice when I need to go to a third-party operating system to actually run through my tests. And so you can notice that I can actually get in here and edit these test cases using the same uh, types of grids that I was used to from the previous test uh, manager view. I can create new test plans, uh, but I can also run these tests. And so when I run these tests, it's going to open up as a web browser that allows me to go through and run the test and report on the results of individual test steps. Now, you don't get the full integration with the operating system like you would from the rich Microsoft Test Manager experience. So you'll notice that I'm not capturing a video recording. It's harder to capture rich information like screenshots from here. But I can still say, you know, this doesn't work when I click the link. And I can file that as a bug over to the development team. And so it makes it um, still possible for you to run those tests even though you're not getting the full rich experience that you would expect from within Microsoft Test Manager. So that was just a quick look at how Microsoft Test Manager 2013 can be used for both formal and exploratory testing. There's a lot more capabilities that I didn't have time to show you, but there's other videos on Channel 9 and elsewhere that you can use uh, to see some of the other capabilities that we offer.